Okay, the next thing that we're going to look at is closed intervals. Closed intervals being snapshots of curves. So if I can close this curve off between here and here, then I'm looking at the snapshot between here and here and the behaviour of the curve. Now, what we're going to look at is to identify maximum and minimum values of a curve and a closed interval. So here is a closed interval, so let's say that that's an x coordinate of 0 and an x coordinate of 3. We can see here that the maximum value of the function, i.e. its maximum height, occurs at the maximum turning point. And with this one we can see that the minimum value occurs at the minimum turning point. Now it could be then tempting to think that the max and min value of a function in a closed interval always occur at the max and min turning points, but it's not necessarily true. So in this one, absolutely the maximum value does occur at the maximum turning point, and for this one, the minimum value definitely occurs at the minimum turning point. But for a function like this one, the maximum value does not occur at the maximum turning point, it actually occurs at the end point, because we can see that that's further up than the maximum turning point. And we can also see that the minimum value does not occur at the minimum turning point, but the minimum value actually occurs down here at the end point. So what we can say is true that in a closed interval the max and min values occur either at the turning points or the end points. And what do you do then? You need to check both to see where they occur. So they either occur at the maximum and turn points or they occur at the end points. And the maximum and minimum value being just how far up and down does the function go its height. Okay, so let's try a couple of examples. So for the following function, find the max and min values within the given closed intervals. So the first one, example one, let's go with y equals ax cubed minus 3x squared. Okay, the closed interval is between minus 2 and 1. So that means that we're going to look at a snapshot of this curve between the x-coordinate of minus 2 and then the x-coordinate of 1. So remember that we need to check stationary points and we need to check end points. Okay, so we're looking for maximum values, so that is a measure of the y-coordinate because that is a measurement of the height. Let's first of all investigate stationary points. So stationary points, remember, positions of zero gradient, so that will be 24x squared minus 6x is equal to zero. And remember it's dy by dx equals zero for stationary points. Okay, so let's take out a common factor, 6x bracket 4x minus one equals zero, 6x equals zero, and 4x minus one is equal to zero. x equals zero, 4x equals one, and x equals one quarter. Okay, let's just find the y coordinate, so sub x equals 0 into y. That'll be y equals 8 lots of 0 cubed minus 3 lots of 0 squared, which is 0. So stationary point 1 then is 0, 0. And let's investigate stationary point 2. So that's going to be sub x equals 1 quarter into y. So that'll be y equals 8 lots of 1 quarter cubed minus the lots of one quarter squared. So one quarter, one cubed is one, four cubed is 64, so that's eight over 64. Since it's eight times one sixty-fourth, minus one squared is one, four squared is 16, that's three sixteenths. Okay, so that's one eighth, take away three sixteenths which would be 2 sixteenths take away 3 sixteenths, and that is minus 1 sixteenth. 
So stationary point two then is given by one quarter minus one sixteenth. Okay, so so far I've got a y coordinate of zero and a y coordinate of minus one sixteenth. Let's me check the stationary points. Let's now check the end points. Okay, remember that the end points are given by minus two and one. So let's sub x equals minus two and two y. So that'll be y equals eight lots of minus two cubed minus three lots of minus two squared. Minus two cubed is minus eight times that eight is minus sixty four. Minus two squared is four times that be minus three, and that is minus twelve, which will then give me minus seventy six. Okay, so I've got an end point of minus two seventy six. Let's try our other end point, which is to sub x equals one into y. So that will be y equals 8 lots of 1 cubed minus 3 lots of 1 squared. That's going to be 8 take away 3, which is 5. So our other end point then is given by 1, 5. We can now analyse the stationary points and the end points, and we can see quite clearly that the max value is given by Five and the min value is given by minus 76. Okay, let's try another. We're going to find the max and min values of the function y equals 4x cubed minus x squared minus 4x plus 1 in the closed interval between minus 1 and 2. So we're looking at this function between and it's coordinate of minus 1 and 2. So remember that we must check end points and we must check stationary points. So let's go for stationary points first of all. So differentiate make equal to 0. 12 x squared minus 2x minus 4 is equal to 0. So dy by dx equals 0 for stationary points. Okay, let's now take out a common factor of 2, brackets 6x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to 0. Okay, we can then divide both sides by 2 to come down here. Two numbers multiply, you have minus 12, I take a look of minus 1, it's minus 4 and 3. can simplify both brackets by dividing both by, well, 2 and 3, so that will be 3x minus 2 in the first bracket and 2x plus 1 in the second bracket. That then will give me 3x minus 2 is equal to 0 and 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. 3x equals 2 and x is equal to 2 over 3. And 2x equals minus 1 and x equals minus 1 over 2 being the positions of my stationary points. Okay, let's sub these back into the original function. So I'm going to sub x equals 2 over 3 into y. So that'll be y equals 4 lots of 2 over 3 cubed minus 2 over 3 squared minus 4 lots of 2 over 3 plus 1. If I throw all of that into the calculator, I'll get a result of minus 25 over 27. I'm now going to sub x equals minus 1 half into y. So that will be y equals 4 lots of 1 half all cubed minus 1 half squared minus 4 lots of 1 half plus 1, and if I throw all that in, I'll get a result of 9 quarters. So I've got stationary point 1 then is given by 2 thirds minus 25 over 27, and stationary point 2 given by minus 1 half 9 quarters. So let's now check the end points. Okay, so remember that the end points are minus 1 and 2. 
So let's sub these into the original function for y. So sub x equals minus 1 into y. That'll be y equals 4 lots of minus 1 cubed. Minus minus 1 squared. Minus 4 lots of minus 1 plus 1. Minus 1 cubed is minus 1 times that before, and that is minus 4. Minus 1 squared is 1, so that's minus 1 plus 4 plus 1. And that will give me a result of 0. So end point 1 then is given by minus 1, 0. Okay, let's now try end point 2. So let's sub in x equals 2 and to y. So that'll be y equals 4 lots of 2 cubed minus 2 squared minus 4 lots of 2 plus 1. So 2 cubed is 8 times 4 is 32 minus 4 minus 8 plus 1. So 32 take away 4 is 28. 28 take away is 20 plus 1 is 21. So end point 2 then is given by 221. We can see clearly then that the max value of the 4y coordinates is 21. And that the min value of the 4y coordinates is definitely minus 25 over 27.